Uh, the webinar is live now. Hello, welcome to Be Based Twice. I'm just waiting for more attendees to join in before we get started with the conversation. Hi, folks. Uh, welcome to Be Based Twice. In today's webinar, the topic for today's webinar is using digital technology to support a just transition. It is moderated by Zoe Lenkovich. She's a waste management specialist at Global Waste Lab. Uh, Zoe has moderated other webinars. She's also been a panelist on other webinars. So do go check out her profile on wastewise.be and you will see all the various webinars she's been part of. Zoe is uh, going to talk to Lorena Gallardo, who's a solid waste management expert, and Alan Kimambo, co-founder and CEO of Zedi Recyclers Limited. Um, and... Uh, as usual, some housekeeping, please use the Q&A to drop in your questions. Please use chat to have conversations amongst yourselves or if there's an observation you want to make and uh, we will continue the conversation. Over to you, Zoe. Super, thanks so much, Sveta. And hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Um, as Sveta kindly introduced me, my name is Zoe Lenkovich. I've done quite a few of the Be Waste Wise webinars now and looking forward to doing more over the coming months. Uh, my background is in solid waste management. I've worked in lots of different countries across the global south, and I was also recently the lead author for the Global Waste Management Outlook, which was a joint publication between the United Nations Environment Programme and the International Solid Waste Association. Now, in that report, um, we actually identified the that, um, you know, it's 2024. We've never had more data and more access to digital tools than we have today. Um, and also at the moment, a lot of the, the discussion in our sector is going is moving towards this just transition to a circular economy. Now, what do we mean by just transition? What we mean, well, I mean, it means quite a lot of things. But one of the key um, key principles of a just transition is to make sure that the workers um, involved in in any activity that you know that's going to prevent greenhouse gas emissions or prevent pollution that these frontline workers actually benefit fairly from any new services that are being provided. Right now, what we find in waste management, as I'm sure many of you. Um, I'm just looking down the names here. Yet, yeah, definitely, many of you who are with us today will know is that um, in countries where waste management is not a formalised service, and even in some places where it is a formalised service, the people who are actually doing the the pretty back breaking work. You know, it can be dirty. Um, it can be you know you're lifting heavy heavy bags or containers of waste um quite often being uh you know not treated very nicely by people in the in the city and so on it's you know it's it's hard work um and so that's why i had this the idea of holding this webinar of bringing together this these digital tools and the concept of a just transition and i wanted to introduce you to um two absolute stars in this area lorena gallardo from uh, resi resi in ecuador and alan kimambo who has set up the zaidi app um as part of the takania jira services in tanzania um so both of these people are very experienced and have a lot of wonderful um you know ideas and and um you know features from their apps to share with you so i'm hoping Hoping that you find this um, you know, really helpful and informative. And please, if you're watching this live, please feel free to drop a question into the QA. And um, after our kind of introductory discussions, we'll, you know, we'll we'll start addressing your direct questions. So uh, without further ado, I shall kick off and I shall ask Lorena first of all, could you please introduce yourself? Hello everyone, good morning for me and good evening for many of you. I'm Lorena, I'm from Quito, Ecuador. Um, so, well, I'm the co-founder of ResiVesi. Uh, my, my background is I'm an environmental engineering um, who really loved the social and environmental issues in the country regarding specifically waste management, which is why I specialized uh, during my postgraduate studies in waste management and in sustainable cities. 
Um, and then a few years after that, uh, with my uh, colleagues and co-founders of Recibesi, we decided that uh, we, act we really needed to do something with the problematics that were at the moment um, being affected in our country, which were on one side, um, the linear model of uh, producing and disposing waste, and on the other hand, uh, also the reality of thousands of grassroots recyclers or waste pickers that were not recognized at the moment. And unfortunately, uh, although there have been many efforts, they are still not being fully recognized in the, in the waste management systems. Uh, so that's why we created Recibesi a few years ago uh, with the purpose of connecting all these actors and specifically by recognizing the work uh, grassroots recyclers do uh, every day. So yeah, thanks. Super, thanks very much, Lorena. It's really a pleasure having you here. So thank you again for joining us. Um, and Alan, over to you, please. Would you like to introduce yourself? Thank you. Thanks so much, Zoe. I'm happy to be here. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, probably good morning to others. Alan, I think we just um, lost your video. Am I audible? Uh, you're all, you're audible, audible, yes, but we've lost your video. There you are. Perfect. Thank okay. you. Please continue. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So, good day. Good evening. Uh, good morning. Probably good afternoon. Uh, other who are attending this uh, session. It's such a wonderful session. Um, so, my name is Alan Kimambo. Um, an engineer by profession. Um, but I didn't start actually directly with waste management, you know, activities. So, I worked with the corporate companies. Um, you know, Unilever and uh, Bolore Transport and Releases for the past like eight years before I transitioned to the venture that I'm doing right now. So it was like 2016, uh, 2015 actually when I saw uh, that opportunity. Uh, some of the company were importing waste from uh, outside the country. And uh, for me, it was like an eye opener. Why should company import, you know, waste? Because it was waste paper by that time uh, from outside the country while they are available in Tanzania. Hello, am I audible? Yes. Thanks, Alan. Yeah, please carry on. Hello. Hello. I think Alan is losing. Uh, I mean, because of Alan's Signal. network, he's losing. Yeah. Alan, it might be good if you can. I, and I think his internet is down. Oh, I can oh. see it back. Alan, it might be good if you could just keep your video off. We might You might just save bandwidth that way. Yeah, you can okay. hear me. Am I audible now? Yes, yes, thank you. Oh, sorry for the bad internet. So I said um, in 2016, we I saw an opportunity um, whereby some of the companies in Tanzania were importing waste. And by that time, it was cotton boxes. So they're importing from outside the country. They bring here as a raw material. So for me, I asked myself, why you know, should companies import waste while they're available in Tanzania? So by that time, I had no idea that, you know, I can be able to, you know, recover all these materials. But from my, you know, um, curiosity mind and, you know, the, you know, passion to support the environment, I said, okay, fine. Let me try to reach this company and tell them, you know, I can do this, uh, you know, for you, you don't need to import. So I did, I reached the company, I reached the company, they gave me the opportunity. I did my survey and in 2016, we started supplying our first consignment. And since then, up to this moment, we are doing now the collector collection in, in the country and supply to that company. But again, um, we, we've, we've been able to even bring other you know, people who uh, saw the opportunity and started you know, doing the same. Um, so we started as that, like we saw the, the opportunity um, on the traditional business. But again, we didn't even start with the idea that, okay, fine, you know, there are waste pickers in the, in the, in the sector, um, but Along the line, as we are trying to find how can we collect these materials, so we find that there are agents, you know, who are supplying these materials, and these agents are buying from oil speakers, and then we find their factories are selling these materials, they are, you know, the markets. So, we, okay, we'll say, okay, fine. So we'll start with the agents because that's an easy way to start with. And then going forward, we'll find how do we now incorporate oil speakers in our, in our model. So now in our current model, we have like um, our own collection centers across the country. We always speak as now bring material directly to our, to, our, to, our, to our centers. Now with that, we said, okay, fine. So what can we do to elevate the impact of these speakers? 
uh, again in the community at large, what is it what is it being done by other you know practitioners? Uh, and then the question comes of the uh, extended career responsibility. So what are they doing? They're saying they're supporting the industry. How do they? How can they support now the you know the people on the on the ground? So that was quite challenging, and I tried to reach some of the companies um, who are you know running the extended project responsibility to support the idea, but they couldn't you know even uh, give me the opportunity to, to do that. So we had to you know as I did, because we are into waste collection, so we're generating some money. We said okay, fine, let's start you know slowly by slowly building this tool that can offer transparency. You know, between the pickers who are picking waste, the buyback centers, and the you know, kind of companies that are you know they're buying this waste. From there, we can say now, you guys, you know, let's come to the table and see the metrics. What can we do now with these people? So that's how we started, and that's how we started incorporating now, you know, waste pickers in our business. That's brilliant. Thanks, Alan. Um, really appreciate that introduction. And interesting that you you kind of you started your operations and then moved to you know observing that the that the value chain was already there which it is you know pretty much everywhere and then started identifying how you could really support the people at the beginning of that value chain um and I liked what you said about you know how it, it can increase transparency, particularly where you have you know corporates that are paying into an extended producer responsibility scheme or something like that. Um, you know these are, are, are being sort of replicated or expanded um, all over the place at the moment. And and I know that there are concerns actually in in a number of countries that um, EPR systems, as they are kind of um, as the model has been developed in Europe actually has the system has weaknesses when you go to work you know when you go to apply it somewhere where the waste collectors are perhaps not formalized um you know they're not in a in a regulated structured um business or or municipality as such so it's quite a different context and i think that that's really where this um digitalization and the use of apps really comes into its own you know it really adds so much value so so thanks for that that introduction that's that's been really helpful for getting us more deeply into this topic um, so I'm going to go back to Lorena now, and I'm going to ask you, Lorena, please. Um, so with your with your app, then how did you identify the needs, not just of the waste collectors, but also the waste generators, right? Because I know that you're using your app to increase service coverage and increase, um, you know, the benefits for the waste collectors. So can you tell us a little bit about how you got to learn about the needs of both sides and, and therefore develop the app in, in the way that you did? Yes, thank you, Zoe. So as I was saying, when we started Recibesi, which was back in 2016, more or less, um, it was like a volunteering initiative with few people that we all of us had a full-time job and we started gathering together after hours um, to try to solve these two main problems that I mentioned before. Um, so we started working in this one neighborhood in Quito, in my home city. Um, and we, what, what happened there is that we, by the moment, um, identified many grassroots recyclers, waste pickers of the area of this neighborhood. And uh, there was people of whose background was uh, technology, uh, software development. They created the first version of the app because they already thought we need to make this scalable. So we had like a prototype, a very, very simple uh, mobile application at the moment where we included like uh, in a map, all the routes that the grassroots recyclers were doing in the neighborhood to collect the material. Um, this was the very first time that these people were registered in any type of platform. And we started creating this human bond with them. And we published in our, we posted in many of our social media at the moment, we started with Facebook. And what happened was that many people from other neighborhoods and even other cities started to ask us, I also want this in my neighborhood. And that's how it all started because we were only a few people doing this as a volunteering initiative, which later evolved into what Recibes is now. Uh, but at the moment we didn't have the capability of satisfying all these neighborhoods that were asking at the moment, I also want this in my neighborhood. And, it, and this phrase kept uh, sounding for us, 
how we do this possible? And the technology people said, this is very easy. We already have a prototype with this first version of the mobile application. We can try to do this scalable in other, so that people in other places can also use the, the app and it, they don't rely on us because we are like a small group um, which, who is working volunteering as volunteers at the moment. We didn't have any funding at the moment. Um, so that's how it started. The first needs that we identified um, later, the app has been changing a lot where we currently have the fourth version of the application um, and it has different features. I, I, I'm going to show you a few of the features that I have on these small, very quick slides. Um, so here they are. So if you can tell me if it's working. Um, yes. Perfect. So as, as I said, Resi app is a product of Resi Resi. Um, and nowadays we we can proudly say that it's the first social and technological innovation system and, and mobile application that connects waste pickers with waste generators. We call them citizens, but uh, in, in the practice, it's all type of waste generators. Um, so what it's interesting is that it has been growing very organically. Uh, Resi app has been is being used now for with many people all around the country and even we have registers of people that are using it in, in other uh, countries um, that well the, the app is now only in Spanish when they were wishing to have it also in English um, and the benefits that we have is that it creates connections uh, with uh, grassroots recyclers and citizens it rewards people and I'm going to show you briefly about that um, it also permits the recycling without intermediaries and it gathers data. So here there are a few uh, screenshots of our application and I'm going to show you my favorite part of the app. So the main screen um, is the one where it asks you how you want to deliver your recycling today. And if you have few options depending on the city where you are, so you can either contact a person so that that can is already currently working in your neighborhood and you can make a direct contact so you can register that delivery. Uh, you can also go directly to a, a station we call the recycling station so you can deliver the recycling there or in a storage center. Um, or also you can uh, ask for a delivery, door, like a paid door-to-door -door -door delivery. Um, and then we also included a few other options, like what else can I do today, which is I can also uh, use my points and my rewards, um, or I can also register a grassroots recyclers. And that's how I'm, I'm saying this is my favorite part of the app, because uh, this is a map that, that exists since the very first version of the application. Uh, in this app, you can see all these green dots are re the representation of a person, of a grassroots recycler that is working on that area. So what happened there is that someone, um, not necessarily a Resi-Besi, registered this person. It, that's why we call this a collective map or a collaborative map, so that people can actually register directly the, the person that is working on their street. And then when you click on that, you can see the main, the, the, the full profile of that person. So you can contact them, they, you have your their telephone number, you have their the schedules, the, the hours in which they are working, the main point where they work, um, what type of materials they collect. And then um, you can create this human bond. And because by the end of the presentation of the of the profile, you have something that says what is the the, the desire, what is one of the wishes that this person has. And it's very interesting because we have studied what are the main wishes that people, the, the waste pickers have. And for example, they talk a lot about having education for their children, having their own house, their own storage center. Um, and many of them are happy with what they are doing, but they would like to be recognized, which is another of the wishes they have. Um, so it also has the, this informative section um, where you can learn on how and what to recycle depending on the context where you are. We always say that something is recyclable depending on the on the context. If you are in Quito, probably there's something that is recyclable that is not in other countries or in other cities even. So here we teach people how to recycle and how to do it. 
And then it also has a reward system because it allows people every time they deliver the recyclable material to a grassroots recycler or to anyone in our system, um, they get points that then they can uh, use in different establishments uh, that we have created all these alliances. So there are the categories of all the places where you can use your, your points. And then we added a few other functionalities, also thinking about our mod business model, because at the beginning we didn't really think about how to monetize with what we were doing. We were doing it just because we wanted to change the world. <laughs> but then we, we realized that we needed to live out of this if we wanted this to be to still uh, be to be alive. Um, so what we did was to introduce few other functionalities. For example, we do kind of publicity with few of the brands that we work with. We make sure that these brands are actually doing something and that's how we work with them. So we work with local uh, beverage brands and we send a push notification so that people are motivated to deliver their recyclable materials. We are also showing what we're doing section so people know what we are up to. And then we included this section in which you uh, brands that we work with can create campaigns like the one we created few a couple of years ago with one big um, consumer goods company, a beverage company. Um, so we created a specific campaign so that people can deliver the recyclable uh, PT in this case into our um, authorized points. And then we also um, give tips so that people know what is recyclable and what, and what is not. So that would be it in terms of the functionalities that we have on, on Resi app. Um, and then we are always willing to update and do a few upgrades also to our mobile application. It, it comes along with a complete system that collects data that can also have traceability of what we are doing in our multiple campaigns. Um, and we are always thinking about how to include new functionalities one that we are uh, wishing to do very soon is, for example, to transfer the points that people uh, earn to benefits that are for grassroots recyclers, for waste pickers. So that's one of the million ideas that we have. So hopefully we're going to keep upgrading, up updating the app in the following months and years. Thanks. That's great. Thanks so much, Lorena. Um, yeah, I just I really love so many of the features of the Resty Bessy app. Um, I think like you, my favorite part, um, although it's hard to pick, but my favorite part is where you ask the waste collectors, the grassroots recyclers, um, what their hopes and dreams are. You know, I just it's a really humanizing, it's a simple feature. But it's very humanizing because I think that, you know, whenever we read about the experience of waste collectors, wherever they are in the world, whether it's in Europe or, you know, Latin America, Africa, anywhere, quite a lot of the time they do suffer from harassment in the street. Um, you know, people don't respect them. And so I, I, I think that it's a really beautiful and important and deep feature, like deep on a soul level feature that you're actually, you know, bringing out this person's story and their their personality and helping the local residents form that bond with them, which then, of course, increases the likelihood that people will participate in the scheme so that's that's really lovely and I'm, I'm delighted that you could come on today and um, to share that with everybody and um, the other point that I wanted to um just flag about what you said was that how scalable it makes all of this you know that you can you can keep adding waste collectors and you can keep you know you can move to other towns I'm sure it's not just you know press a press a key and is set up for another city but the fact that it is scalable because a lot of donors and funders at the moment are really, you know, that's really key for, for you know, people investing money in these systems. They want to see that things are scalable. Um, and you've got you've already got the evidence that your that your app is entirely scalable. I mean, you said you're in 10 cities now, 2000 users, 1.8 thousand waste collectors so um so really great and i hope that you know if there are donors and funders watching this at any point you know do do take a look because it's um it's a really great example of a scalable approach to delivering a just transition so thank you lorena that's great um alan i'm pleased that you're back i hope you can hear us okay um would you like to hi hi thank you yeah. that's okay i totally understand i'm just glad that you're here so while you're here 
please tell us, how did you identify the needs of the waste collectors and the waste generators to decide on the features for your app? Yes, uh, actually, allow me to share um, the key. Um, okay, you. so I, I hope you can see my screen. Um, yes, got it. Right. Perfect. Okay, so oftentimes we, we, we are now like narrowing down to what is the like core function of the ID app. So, we started with like the issues of waste pickers. Now that the waste pickers, they, they need like um, to be protected. They need to be treated fairly. They should be transparent, right? So now how can that be? How can that happen? So there is where now we started doing survey, you know, uh, we did a survey to the waste pickers themselves. Um, we did some search on what has been done in Africa and in another part of the world. We even ask, of course, you know, some recyclers. So we found that currently, uh, by the time that we are starting, there, there were no, like, an application that goes down to the ground and collect the, like, data for the waste picker and show up, like, show them to the, to the, to the, to the world that, these are the data for a woman who is in Tanzania or is, you know, whatever country. So we, want, we wanted, to, wanted to, okay, fine. First, we get their profile as one of the feature. And second, we say, okay, this is our speaker. And another part is what do they collect? So it's just like picturing, uh, taking what they do and just show it, put it in the technology and show to the world that this, this is what these people are, are doing. Um, and you can see like their frequency of collection and what they are earning and how much of course they, they collect. So we didn't like reinvent the wheel. We just took what is already available on the ground and then implemented it in our application. Obvious to try to put it in the, in the, in the, in the technology is not that easy, obvious, it is, it's quite challenging. And you don't have any support force from any other, you know, a partner. You just have to use your own money. Um, so that is for the waste pickers. But again, when we are doing that, we wanted to say, okay, fine. We want it to be a democratic kind of um, platform. It's not a platform uh, um, because the data that we collect is not our data. Is it our data? It's, it's not even a recyclers data. It's a waste pickers data. So are they capable of seeing their data? every day? Um, do they demand that their data should be on the platform? Um, even if they, if they want data maybe just today, are they able to get that data just to see it and even you know, get it printed? Um, if they want it for financial you know, services and whatever kind of one, you know? So we want to build a platform that is democratic. But another, uh, another function, uh, feature is well, okay, how can we scale this application? So we built it in such a way that in whatever country you are, I hope I'm still audible because my internet yes. is showing that I'm- Yeah, we terrible. can hear you great. Okay. Please continue, thanks. So in whatever country um, uh, that we are, the speaker are operating, the platform can you know, take care of that. So, and that's why we have been able to register more than 4,000 US speakers. And within these 4,000 West speakers, there are West speakers in Ghana, there are West speakers in Lusaka, Zambia, there are West speakers in Rwanda, West speakers in Uganda and uh, Uganda and Kenya. And of course, in, in Rwanda, um, it, it was a different case where a company, they wanted the, to, they wanted the, uh, the technology to map speakers, register all those speakers in their locality, and then linking them with the buyback centers and collect all the data that they, they you know, actually collect all the data that we speak, I mean, the, the information that we speak as, uh, you know, interacting with the, with the buyback centers. And that is the EnviroSave uh, um, app, which is in Rwanda, which actually it's, 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 it's the same, same technology as the app, but it's working in Rwanda as EnviroSave. And it's working um, very well even now, if you look into their, into their data, you see the data, like since uh, last year, November, the data have been you know, put in the system. So there's that kind of a transparency. So there is a, that kind of, a, I mean, a, 
uh, scalability function. And also we built the, the application such that it's not only Zaidi uh, or the Taka Nigeria uh, Foundation that can just operate with the, with the benefit of their application and not all of course the waste pickers in Tanzania, but some of the organization in other countries, like in Uganda, we have, we have organization that are using the platform to, the, the, the idea to collect data for their organization. And then they can even show um, the impact of their, you know, um, of, of their waste pickers. So it, it is such a way that it cater uh, the needs of the waste pickers, um, the, the organization, small organization that cannot, you know, um, develop this kind of application because sometimes you need a lot of, you know, um, money and, you know, um, um, high, you know, tech people, high developers, you need to manage them. So it gives opportunities for different, you know, organizations. So that is with the way speakers, but again, with other users, um, like the, the households, maybe offices. So oftentimes we, we, we get um, cases where people want to dispose items, like they want to dispose um, um, car batteries, maybe electronic waste, maybe plastic, you know, but they don't know where to do. They don't have that access. They, they, are, they do not have the infrastructure to, to do that, like just what Resi app is doing. So what we have done through the application uh, that people can now go to the application, they can schedule for an e waste pickup, and we go and collect it. Um, it, it, like in Tanzania, uh, if they have, you can show you for car batteries, we can go and collect it. Now the offices, the service for the offices, they just show you uh, for waste bins. Like you go to the application, you request the digital bin. So what do we do? We come to your office, we designate one, uh, whether it's one bin or two bins. If you have requested for paper, plastic, maybe glass, so we label it. This is now the physical bin, but you have registered this on the application as a digital digital bin. So oftentimes you'll be now requesting for collection of the material. So once you collect, you get the notification. We come to uh, empty the, the the bin and we register each and every um, data that you collect there. So you have now the organization has an, an opportunity now to even um, you know download um, the data that the office uh, they, they are recovering time to time. So that's what we offer for the, for the offices. But again, through the application, we have mapped the, where can you drop off your waste? So that you, if you do sorting, there, there's no issue, there's no challenge on where to you know, just drop off. So we have mapped some of the localities in Dar es Salaam where people can now go and drop off their waste. And again, the same, same feature is, uh, is, is available um, for other countries. And the, also the, the, the backend, the platform is also available, the, the dashboard, it's also available for other countries um, where Zaid is not working as a as, as, as collector, but is working as a technology platform. So, which means the organization can now use this uh, platform as an opportunity for them to engage people, to raise awareness, and you know, recover more materials and even get more um, uh, pay, uh, support. So that, that is a feature which goes to the households and offices, but there's another feature. Um, uh, again, all this is about data. Again, um, there's data that you collect and the data that you can now use for different you know, uh, aspects. But there's another feature, which is the payment. So payment, that there are, there are two angles. I hope I'm still audible. Yes, thank you. Oh, thank you. So payment, there are two angles. There is a payment where you can pay waste pickers directly. So some of the companies, they want to pay waste pickers directly, you know, recyclers. So what we have done through the application, um, and we have done that also in Rwanda, in Tanzania, we've done that. The only challenge is the tariff fee, the charges, the transaction charges. But in Rwanda, it's very easy because the transaction charges are, are not that, that much expensive. So like a recycler uh, who is working with the agents or the buyback center or collection center, they can now pay the directly to the waste picker without giving the, the, the buyback center person or the collection center uh, personnel cash. And that we have, we have tested and it is, it is working. So that's one way uh, to, to, see, to see how your money, how does the money goes directly to the waste pickers. And you can say now you, you either you are paying fairly or you want to increase um, the, the payment, or you want to award the top performers uh, uh, waste pickers. 
So that is uh, also something that we are doing in terms of the, of the payment. But there's another element of payment where um, the, the, the companies that are collecting garbage from the households, they're oftentimes struggling and raise awareness on the, of the households, uh, collecting payment from the households. So what we have done, we have uh, created the, um, uh, the, 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 the features in such a way that once you go and collect your garbage, we, the, the house owner or the building owner can pay you directly via uh, Zaidia. And more so, this time, we have even helped them with another feature where we map every um, houses, you know, every building, building. We map the location, we take the, the, the location, uh, the GPS location, um, um, the, the activity of that building, the house owner, the house owner number, the tenant number, the tenant, the, 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 and also um, how much fee that house or business has to pay. So we are now driving this so that we can even more support them in terms of raising awareness for their for them to able to the household to be able to sort as well as to to, to increase their payment. So. This is how we have navigated through different challenges which are available. And we can say Zaid is like a one-stop platform that offer a variety of services according to the challenges that we see day-to-day uh, -day in Tanzania and other countries and other countries. I'm not sure if I've, I've, I've made myself clear, although there are a number of slides that I can I can I can share, but that's in nutshell how we came up with the features and how we are we are moving on um currently. Thanks so much. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Ellen. That was very comprehensive. And I'm just, I'm a bit bowled over by all of the different features and the, again, the scalability, you know, the fact that Zaidi app can work in Rwanda or Uganda or, you know, anywhere else. Um, Cause I know there's a lot of, uh, you know, waste management organizations that like the idea of having an app, but probably much like you were and and Lorena at Resi Vesi, you know, at the beginning thinking, well, we're not developers and we don't have the funds. And I see a lot, you know, I, I just feel like it's it's maybe a waste of money that all of these different organizations want an app. They, they're going to build an app. They're going to build an app. They're going to build an app. So, you know, I think it's a great um a great movement for the sake of efficiency that you've made the Zaidi app um you know kind of a white label product that other people can use for their organizations that's super smart i really love that um also interesting that you are able to collect other waste streams through it so not just the traditional you know is it paper and card or tins or plastics but also if people have these other you know like batteries or or other e-waste that they want taken away that's um that's really great and i suppose because of the way that you've built the app you can add to it you can make it um suitable for other geographies or you know for other waste streams as well um and that's something that i wanted to ask you both actually i didn't put it in our preparation preparation notes for the session but i'm just interested because um these days a lot of you know we know that um a lot of the municipal waste in cities is food waste right and i know that waste pickers generally don't collect food it's heavy it's smelly it's not pleasant but it's also a bit of a missed opportunity at the moment isn't it because there's a lot of value to be recovered from food waste in terms of making compost to prevent soil degradation or feeding it to black soldier fly larvae and making you know more sustainable animal feed. So I wondered, have either of you, I'll go to Lorena first, but have either of you um, considered including food waste? Has there been any demand from waste generators or have you discussed it with waste collectors and they've said, you know, you'd need to set up a separate system for that. You know, what's the what's the situation there, please, Lorena? Yeah, it's actually a great question. Yeah. Um, so uh, from Rosivesi, like specifically, we've thought about it, and that's something that we would like to explore, especially because um, there's a huge growth need, growing need of the population to collect their food waste. And nowadays, there are many other small or smaller companies or groups of people collecting food waste and they are doing compost. But the big, big, big problem and the main challenge that we're facing here is that 
the service is not being recognized as a payment, neither for waste pickers nor for um, the, the food waste collectors. So as long as it keeps working like that, especially in our country, for example, waste pickers are not being paid for the service they provide to the municipality, although they are um, diverting a lot of waste from the landfills and that supposes a, a reduction in the costs of the municipality and it's the same for wood, food waste, then the, co the logistic costs are not gonna be fulfilled if the service is not being transparented and also it's not being paid for grassroots recyclers. They, we have talked to them in many occasions because we thought it would be interesting for them to be working and, and kind of close the circle of the, the most of the, of the waste that is being generated in the cities with the organic waste being the most, uh, the, the, the one that is uh, the biggest portion of the waste. But the big problem is that if their service is not being paid, then the value of the food waste per se is not enough to um, provide the whole solution on the collection of the system. So yeah, that would be the main challenge that we face and that's something we've thought about it. But yeah, unfortunately, as long as that is not being covered, then it's something that we might not be able to work with. Thank you. Yeah, that's a really, really important point there about the waste collectors not being paid for their service to society, because when they're only being paid for the material value of what they collect, that's not quite a just transition as far as I'm concerned, is it? You know, none of us would want to work, um, go picking litter from the streets and just get paid for the value of what we collect. And also when that's the system then a lot of stuff just gets left behind as litter because like sachets and a lot of flexible plastics, you know, there's such hard work to collect for their value, which is pretty much nothing. Um, so we really need to be incorporating these systems better. You know, there is money for waste management. There is money for, um, you know, circular economy initiatives or for, for diverting food waste from dump sites. Um, and that's maybe something that we could we could dig deeper into. I mean, we look at the you know, disaster in, in Uganda a couple of weeks ago, you know, diverting food waste from dump sites needs to be a priority um, for so many reasons, not least the health and safety of the waste pickers at the dump sites themselves. Right. So so, Alan, over to you. Any any thoughts on on using your app to get food waste collected as well? Or are you still just focusing on the recyclables? Yeah, um, I'm not sure I'm still audible. Uh, forgive me for my internet. Am I audible? Oh my God. Yes, you are audible, Alan. Yeah. So let me share uh, what we are doing currently. And it's one of the uh, actually great movement which we started like in the past, uh, uh, actually in the past two months. So what we are doing right now, we are working with the garbage garbage collection companies. I hope you know garbage collection companies. Actually, these are the waste contractors that they collect waste from the households. So here I have like now bordered in pretty much to six you know companies already. So what we are doing uh, with them, we are mapping um, um, the households. You know, as I said earlier, we are we are we are mapping each household um, where that this company is working. We are um, whether it's a business, whether it's um, whether it's a factory, whatever kind of information. So, so we're taking all these informations. So why are we taking all these informations? We want to help these companies increase um, uh, engagement um, with their users so that they can now sort their waste. And some of the information that we are collecting is whether they have um, uh, dust bins. You know whether it's they have one, zero, two, or three. Um, we also collect uh, whether they sort food waste. And if they are doing so, what are they using for? Are they using for compost? Are they using for uh, biogas? Um, are they using for insect feed protein? Are they just, you know, you know giving, to, give, giving to away? Or are they feeding their animals and at, at their households? So we also ask them, what are they doing with the hard waste that the dry waste that they, they, they sort? So are they selling, are they recycling, or they just give away? But again, we also ask them if they do farming. So which kind of, kind of farming are they? Is they, are they, they keep um, keeping animals. Maybe they put keep chickens, you know, maybe, you know, like 
house, you know, um, home animals, or do they do um, urban gardening? They, are they doing gardening? So, but also, of course, one of the other information we are collecting is about the, um, do they use, you know, um, um, cooking gas? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. What size of the cooking gas, you know, they do, okay. they, 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 are, they, are, they are, you know, using so that we can know about the, um, the issue of, um, hello? Yes. Hello? Yes, please continue. Yes. So, um, with this, we want to now offer another service. Sure, sure. So with this, we want to offer another service, which is now engaging um, the households through SMS-based um, way. So we'll be telling that the company saw is coming to collect the waste. The company saw is, uh, is telling you, you need to sort your waste. Uh, we'll take, you know, waste which is sorted. We will also, you know, other information that you need to pay for your service. So this kind of engagement brings a new dimension, you know, in the in the market where users are more engaged, and we hope it will change the aspects of, you know, food waste and other kind of uh, waste that we collect from the households. So this is what we are doing with the idea. Yeah. That's great. Thanks, Alan. So I like I like the the two sides of that. The first is you're building up a really clear picture of the of how the the waste collector is living and their needs and their current practices and so on um but then also using you know also coupling that with better communication with the waste generators with the with the householders to say well look you, you know your waste could be going into this area or that area which would all bring benefits so yeah really lovely thank you um, I am very pleased to see we've got a few really interesting questions in the Q&A. So thank you very much to everyone who's dropped their questions in there. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. The first one is from Ronald. Thanks, Ronald. Um, Ronald is asking, how do these apps foster collaboration with municipal waste management? So I'm wondering, you know, what what is the the, the current municipal system um, in, in Quito or in the places where you're working, Alan? Um, you know, and and are the are the apps able to kind of speak to the municipalities, or, or are they getting data from it? What's the what's the connection there, Lorena? Yeah, so we've tried to work. Well, we actually have worked with municipalities uh, with our project and with our, our different projects and with our mobile application. Um, so it, it connects really well with municipalities since they usually, at least not in Ecuador, they, they don't have information or data, for example, regarding waste pickers, how many of them they have. They haven't done a, a proper census so they can know where they are, how many they are. Um, so that's something that the mobile application uh, allows the municipalities to have information data that is currently non-existent in most of them, or when they have it, it's not updated or they don't have this connection with grassroots recyclers. And also the level of specificity that we can get with our mobile application is something that not only the municipalities, but also the companies, the, like the consumer goods companies, which are the main ones that we work with, they value from our app because they get the numbers uh, one from, from every individual that is actually delivering the recyclable material and also from the different companies. So either for municipalities or for companies, they value a lot the information that they can get, the, the traceability of the of the waste um, with the municipalities. It also depends on the policy that is uh, currently going on. Uh, in Ecuador, we do have a national policy that in the last five years, I would say, has been recognizing more the work of grassroots recyclers, of, of waste pickers, and it actually kind of it, it's not compulsory, but what they do is uh, the, what it says is that municipalities need to enforce or need to work with uh, grassroots recyclers. It's not as specific to say how. However, what we are always wanting with Residesi is um, to get the, the grassroots recyclers paid by the service. That's like one of the biggest dreams and one of the biggest fights that they want to. Um, and that's something that uh, we can also uh, kind of foster with with our mobile application. So the ways that we can work with municipalities are, are many. We work, for example, with one of the municipalities that is probably the most, the, is the reference in terms of sustainability in the country that a municipality is Cuenca. It's actually the third biggest city in the country. 
Um, a couple of years ago, we worked, we worked with them and they used our mobile application so they can actually have the information of the routes that uh, waste pickers are doing in the city so they can organize them because the problem they were having is that since they are not municip municipal workers, then they were having a lot of issues regarding the fights that they could have in the streets and they were not respecting, for example, one street that corresponds to one person. Um, so with our app, what they wanted was to organize them um, and have the information on how the people are uh, delivering their recyclable waste. Um, the, the way that we worked with them in that uh, specific time was that we provided the service of the system. So it was more like a software as a system in that specific case. And we are willing to keep working with municipalities in the same way. So, yeah, there are many possibilities with municipalities. That's great. That's really interesting. And it kind of ties in with Virila's question as well. Hi, Virila. Um, thanks for adding your question. So Virila's question is, um, she says, I really like these apps, but how to make them economically viable? Projects and subsidies tend to stop at a certain moment. But what you're saying there, Lorena, is that you've actually, you're, you're selling it as software as a service to the municipality. So this is an ongoing contract that you have with them because of the, the value that you're able to offer them through that waste data. Because you know, waste data all over the world is hugely disappointing most of the time. It's like it's so hard to get accurate waste data. Um, no, that's so so I think that kind of ties in with that question a little bit, doesn't it, about how you've made it financially viable. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Now, Alan, how about you? Projects and subsidies. I mean, you mentioned at the beginning that you actually self-funded your own app. So, you know, are there what it what are your ongoing costs? How are you covering that? Um, you know, do you have any contracts with municipalities to provide them with data or, um, you know, anything like that? Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, again, allow me to project um, um, what I have here. So we we can work with different, uh, as I said, actually ZIDAP is not just for, um, like ZIDAP, as I said, it's for any organization, whether it's a learning institution, municipality, small organization, anyone who's been in research. So I, I give you an example where in, in, I was in Ghana and the one of the um, landfill, they wanted to just know how many, uh, they were looking for a solution to register the OSP cars. It's one of the, it's called so-called It would just give them the solution, you know, and also some of them from that, that, whether it, we can even register whatever is municipality in this project. So some of the data that they can collect, for example, like Zaidi, this is just for Zaidi, which I can show. Um, they can see the, the different, you know, at the economies and social and environmental uh, impacts that they want to see uh, that is happening in, the, in, 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 our, in, our, in our cities. So we can link this with municipalities and every month, they can have these kind of informations, which they can help help them to to whether um, write projects or make you know uh, policy decisions or whatever kind of directives that they they want to do uh, in their locality. So the platform is uh, has been made for easy integration of whatever institution um, that they want to you know work um, uh, with, with the application or they want to. Extract data from the, you know, from the, uh, from the sector, so or from the ecosystem. So, again, I know th these are the. Um, you either depend on projects if you are mostly focusing on this kind of data, um, but with the application, the way we have built it, um, the area that we see like payment coming to us is where we are supporting the garbage collection companies. To collect payment for their, you know, from the households, and also the data that we collect for the households, where we will support them to increase the level of awareness, um, and that, that's where we, we see our money coming in in terms of commission. Uh, but in, in the er other area, it's just through projects. So whether Zoe come with his her projects, we discuss how can we uh, support our, you know, our journey. So that's how we we move on. Rather than just you know saying okay fine municipality you need to you know sign a contract sometimes these people um, not yet see the value of data but with time 
you know, with level of engagement, they'll see the value of data, and then you know you can now benefit from whether it's payment or projects that is coming up. So, thank you. Great, thanks, Alan. I really like that you're, you're being very adaptable with finding where your data has value. Um, so finding a market for that data, and um, whether it's private sector, public sector, or whatever, and um, and keeping it sustained that way, so that you're not, you know, just cutting it off at the end of a funded project, which is one of the big disasters in in you know trying to transform the waste management landscape. I think in a lot of countries, that's great. Thank you. Okay, we've only got five minutes left actually, so and we've got two more questions. Um, I think it's worth um you know addressing them, but we need to be really quick with them. So I'm going to ask both questions and then go to Lorena and go to Alan, and then we're going to have to wrap up. So um Lorena, first of all, we've got a question from Williard. Hi Williard. Um, is he says these apps look great bridging the gap between waste pickers and recycling companies that would for sure add value add add more profit for the waste pickers. He says, is there any specific volume or condition that um, for a waste picker to sell their recyclables directly to the recycling companies? He says, I know most of the waste pickers prefer selling every day after they collect. Um, but in some cases, it might be that you have to aggregate a, a minimum amount before you can sell it. So that's the first question. And the second question, just to save time, um, is from Ruthie Eli. Hi, Ruthie Eli. I hope I am pronouncing your name correctly. Um, he says, or she says, um, thanks to Lorena for sharing your experience with Resi Vesi. Very inspiring. Um, and they would like to know if this kind of project is suitable for a country like Haiti, where there's no policy about waste collection and management. So there's a lot of slums with limited access and insecurity, but could an app like this really help? So first question was about minimum amounts. And second question was about, do you need to have any existing structure before you could introduce something like this? Perfect, thank you for the question. The first question, so yeah, we, we definitely know how the pyramid of the waste pickers work, where they are usually at the bottom and if they don't have minimum volumes, then it's gonna be impossible for them to sell them di directly to the companies. Uh, here in Ecuador, we've been working with the recycling companies. As an example, we're working now with the biggest class recycling company in the country and in the region. Uh, and one of the strategies that they asked us to leave was to open this, uh, we call it the hub of glass, the glass hub uh, of Recibesi. So now we are closer to, to waste pickers so we can buy them directly. Um, so the idea is to also make aware, create awareness on these companies so they can, that letting them know that the need of them to be close or closer to grassroots recyclers. But the idea is also to diversify the strategy so that uh, waste pickers, grassroots recyclers can also uh, create organizations, they can work collectively so they can get the amount they need so they can sell it directly to the company. So that's why we are always trying to promote the organization and if possible, the association of the um, waste pickers that we work with, because we know they need to have minimum volume so they and conditions, not, on, not only volume, but also conditions so they can sell it directly to the bigger company. So yeah, we're trying to, to attack the problem from different sides. And then regarding the second question, um, yeah, so here we don't have a reality that is much different to the one that you are saying. Although we do have some policy, the problem is that the policy is not being implemented. So it, it is as if we didn't have any policy at all uh, regarding waste management or at least a segregated collection. Um, the app that we created does not rely on any municipal system or on any type of regulations or policy. So what we did with the application was to create something that only relies on the consumer, on the citizen, on the companies, on the waste generators, not even on the waste pickers, because the idea is to have the app that is 100% directed to the consumer, to the citizen, so they are the ones re responsible on connecting to um, the grassroots recycler, the waste picker. So the idea in the future is, of course, also give the uh, waste pickers uh, the possibility to have also their own app to connect, to be like the Uber of recycling. However, given the conditions that we work in our countries, we know that that's not possible. They don't have access to internet. They don't have necessarily smartphones. Um, so it's kind of like a similar reality in their, with their own dimensions. Uh, but we believe that uh, there are options when the context is not the idea. Yeah. Sure. 
Okay, thanks. No, that's really helpful. So, 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 um, yes, it's possible to set something like this up where there is no structured service. And in fact, I think most of the waste apps that have been developed have have been designed in places specifically that have no existing structure. So that's really, really helpful. Thank you. And um, we've got one minute to go. So, Alan, I'm going to hand over to you for final comment, please. Um. So we, with the application for us, even if it's one kilogram, uh, it's two kilograms, those speakers can just register through the platform. As I said earlier, we didn't want to first to disturb the ecosystem, we wanted to replicate what is happening on the ground just first to bring transparency um, and, and you know and traceability. And now to see now is it what our, the companies are offering? Is it fair? And what can we do now from there? We really wanted to bring something that is new. No, start from where we are operating and now they improve from, from, from that going up. So through our own buyback center, West speakers bring the material, one kilogram, uh, two kilogram, whether it's five, no problem. Uh, that works very well. But I know with other recyclers, We'll find a way now so that they can you know come and integrate easily and work with us so that they can show more impact of their, their activities yeah brilliant thank you so much uh, i just think that you know these these waste apps they've got so much value to to add you know and because you can keep adding these features on and tweaking them and changing it so that it works in a different geography and what have you they're just there's so much opportunity there you've proven that they're scalable um so my my final message i think would be to anyone whether you're working in waste management or climate finance or extended producer responsibility or just transition you know if you this is this is genuinely centering people and the people who are the most vulnerable and marginalized at the beginning of the value chain okay so if you're working in anything around this please do consider an app that really helps meet the needs of the waste collectors and improves their livelihoods and their well-being because we've, we've seen that it's possible we've seen that it's scalable it's wholly worth investing in um and and you know it, it's just going to keep improving over the over the coming years so thank you everybody for joining this really fascinating talk and a huge thank you to Lorena and Alan it's always a pleasure to hear from you um you're truly inspiring you're truly you know leaders in this space um you know you're setting the pace you're showing others what can be done and why it should be done so um a huge thank you to you and thank you once again to sweater for hosting us again so brilliantly thank you zoe thank you zoe for yet another amazing webinar i think the topic resonated with our audience a lot uh, because i see quite a few questions i saw questions coming in until uh, the very end thank you to lorena and alan i know that someone had messaged uh, saying that they would like to contact the speakers. Uh, Zoe is very uh, is very active on LinkedIn. You can find her there. Lorena and Alan are available on LinkedIn too. And I'm sure their organizations have websites. If you can't find them through any of these ways, you can always write to connect at wastewise.be and we will connect you via email. And uh, you should be able to be in touch with the speakers. So thanks once again, Lorena, Zoe, and Alan. Uh, and thank you to our attendees. The webinar will be up on our website in two weeks and accessible to all. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you Thank very you. much. Bye, Thanks, Joanna. Thanks, Ellen. Bye -bye. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.